All right, hello everyone. This is Alan from MysteryMTG.com. It is a very rainy day here in South Korea, and today we're talking about opening a game store in 2024. Now, if you go to the description of the video, you will find our previous video, which was opening a game store in 2022 slash 2023. And that video goes through a lot of what we're gonna talk about today. I'm hoping this video is a little bit more structured. And the previous video was responding to a lot of Reddit comments that we got on a post. This video is just me talking to you. So let's just jump into it. First things first, um, I don't know where you're at with uh, your planning for your store, if it's already open, if you haven't opened it yet, and maybe this is just a dream of yours. So we're gonna go through it from the very beginning. Where are you looking to open your store? This is something we all mess up with. Um, I did too, and now I'm okay with my location, but I really wish I had maybe thought about it a little bit more. So what I would suggest is sit down, make a list of 10 neighborhoods neighborhoods that you want to open your store in. So I'm in Texas, you're talking about Plano, you're talking about Richardson, you're talking about Garland, uh, you can go all the way to Carrollton. There are a lot of different places you can open your game store and each place has its own density. It has its own uh, game stores that already exist. Those are gonna be competitors of yours, right? Um, there are a lot of things to think about here and everyone thinks, well, I shouldn't open a game store because there's already a store there. Yes, that is true, that is pretty bad to do, and people will get annoyed at you for that, but if it's a store that sells exclusively Pokemon, or Pokemon and Bandai, and you're selling Magic the Gathering, then it's completely fine. We have a store that opened near us that's completely Pokemon. I have no issues with that. Pokemon is a very small part of my business currently. So, um, and we still stock it, we still carry it, but I know that they exist, and they charge higher prices, but they have the whole experience. So keep that in mind, you can still make it work. Really, you're looking for somewhere that is densely populated. Now, a really important thing here is that just because there's a university, just because there's a school, doesn't mean that you automatically have a pool of people who will be coming to your store. Understand that students spend the least amount of money. They might attend a lot of your events, but they will spend the least amount of money. There's a certain demographic that spends the most money at your store. And uh, for us, it's men between the age of 28 to like 35 to 40. Those are the people who come into our store the most because we're mostly Magic the Gathering. And you walk in and you see me, yeah, that's I'm pretty much a representative of the demographic that comes into my store. Uh, we all have beards, that's pretty much what it is. Um, I love it, I mean, these are people I relate to, they're my group of people, I have no problem with that. We're not aiming for a younger demographic, so that's not what is coming into the store. Um, so that's that, right? You know where you're gonna be opening the store. Okay, let's say you have that spot that's in your head. Uh, for us, it was Plano, so you're, you're gonna be opening in Plano. Now you have to come to an agreement with the landlord. I don't know how easily it is, how easy it is for you to get out of this situation without getting scammed in some way, because it almost always feels like a scam when you're a year or two years into it and you look back on that contract and say, I thought I was getting a good deal, but this was really bad. Why does that happen? One, there's an abatement period where you're not paying rent for like six months, okay? That's standard, that's normal. They're gonna try to make you think they're doing something nice for you, they're not. If they're not willing to give that to you, I think you should just move on, unless it's a really good location. Um, if they're not giving the, the abatement period, um, or sometimes it's in combination with a, a certain amount of money that they give you for build out. So we negotiated that our landlord would white box our space, which just means everything's done, AC, everything's just white boxed. Literally what you think when you think white box, that's what I wanted my LGS to be, and then I would do everything else. And they also handled flooring. Um, and we fixed a little a couple of things here and there, but ultimately it was fine. Um, and then they also gave me a four month abatement period, okay? But during that time, this isn't mentioned until, but you have to read the contract so closely, guys. You really do. Negotiate the abatement period. Negotiate them giving you money to help with bend out, uh, uh, build out, sorry. And then negotiate signage. Negotiate visibility. Negotiate things that are going to come up but you're never gonna think of before you open the store. How big are they gonna allow your sign on the front, okay? That's fine. What if you want monument signage? What if you want, if you're near a highway like we are, what if you wanna put a sign up on that little median? All these things are stuff that you have to negotiate pr uh, prior to signing the contract. Because once you sign the contract, they're gonna say, sorry, that you didn't discuss that during the, the uh, negotiations. We're not, gonna, obviously we're not gonna do that. And so, because there's city permits involved, etc. 
So please get that negotiated. Read through your entire contract. Watch 15. You, I, I did that too, and I still messed up because there are a couple of things that I'm like, oh my God, why did we agree to this? This is such a bad deal for us. Um, and the store is doing fine, but if I could go back, I would absolutely renegotiate that contract or maybe just find an entirely new different store. So that's one thing. I know that's stressful. You're going to have to deal with that. And this is going to be a reoccurring theme as you attempt to run your game store or start it. There's going to be a lot of negotiations, contracts with sign makers, with this, that, and whatever. And you have to be well informed. So please take it upon yourself to do your research and maybe get a third party involved that has already gone through this. Okay, so you have picked your neighborhood. You have your, your agreement with the landlord. Now it's build out time. Let's say you got everything done. It's white boxed. Boom, it's an empty space. What are you gonna do with an empty space? Do you have a vision in mind? If you don't have a vision in mind and you keep changing things, oh, well, this looks better this way, this looks better that way, you're really gonna mess up, okay? Because it's a mishmash by the end of it. You need to have a very clear vision of what your space is gonna look like. So sit down. A lot of this is gonna be you sitting down and writing things out. A lot of this, I didn't even do that sometimes, and I'm like, oh, you stupid. Just If you had written it down and visualized it, you would have understood that's how this was going to end up. So when you're opening your game store and you have the white box space, envision how many seats you want, okay? Write it down. Actually use some of the architecture software that's available online and have your space. Make sure the dimensions are correct. Get the dimensions for your chairs. Get the dimensions for your tables and start to, to figure out how much space you have for people to sit, how much space you have for product, how much space you have for slat wall, how much product can you hold on that slat wall? Is some of that product achievable? Can you even get it off, off the slat wall on a normal day if someone wants to buy it? Where's the bathroom? Where's your warehouse? You need storage. These are all a series of very important things that you have to nail because when the day comes that you do this big grand opening, which I would advise against, don't do grand openings, do soft openings, but you do this big grand opening, and suddenly you realize you have a fire hazard because the tables are too big. They're squunched up to, scrunched up together. People are like, oh my God, this is very stuffy. This is uncomfortable. But you, you can't do anything because you have to have a certain minimum amount of seats for stuff like WP. We'll get that later, but stuff like WPN and Bandai or whatever, they might require you have at least 12 to 16 seats or something like that. So if you're in a smaller space and you can't fit the, that number of people, then you are not going to qualify. Not having that stuff is going to kill your business. So really be very careful with this. Our initial space was 2,000 square feet. Luckily, we have an open space behind us, an open space to our side. So we can expand very aggressively, and that's what we're doing. But um, for you, you might not have that luxury. You might be limited to your space, and there's nowhere else for you to expand near your space. So if you can't, you know, once again, sit down put that stuff out make sure you have the dimensions correct because when the items arrive and you start to put things up if it if in reality this was like you had messed up by just a little bit well it could mess up the entire thing because people aren't able to get through the rows of chairs and it creates a fire hazard and maybe the tournaments are just not going to be nice at all because it's stuffy and it's uncomfortable and they're way too close so please keep that in mind okay so let's assume you've built out the well actually let's get into that a little bit more what are you going to need? Slat wall, tables, chairs, glass displays, um, product obviously, hangers, trash cans, signage. But when I say signage, I mean stuff like this is where the bathroom is. This is where don't don't enter here. Don't do this. Don't do that. Um, cleaning stuff. A lot of cleaning stuff. Your POS, your POS uh, card reader, your cash drawer, your um, your storage for the cash, like a little uh, lock box, right? little lock box or big lock box um that's just scratching the surface of it because in your warehouse you're gonna need bubble mailers you're gonna need office equipment you're gonna need shelving um you're gonna need oh book bookshelves for board games and stuff like that in store don't underestimate how much stuff you're gonna need you won't know until the store opens okay you you won't know until the store opens seventy thousand dollars I don't care if you just spent $20,000 on getting everything set up, then you spent another $5,000 on the sign, and now you're like, oh God, well this should be the easy part, we'll just get some tables, we'll get some glass displays, nobody, welcome to hell. This is going to be you attempting to find a good deal, realizing that there isn't a good deal, and then probably just buying off of Uline and overpaying. 
So the cheap way to do this is find stores that are closing, take their stuff at a good price. Very difficult to do. You have to time it around a store closing. The other way is just buying stuff new, realizing that there's going to be massive de depreciation and then you better have some knowledge of your taxes because you need to write some of that off. Um, but once again, you need to know how to do that. We have an accountant, but you probably also need an accountant if you can afford one in the beginning. We couldn't afford one in the beginning. So you have all that stuff. Great. It's all designed. It's all set into their places. You, you see your soft opening date. And you're like, I want to get there real quick. Before you open, you should already be in contact with your distribution channels. So PhD, Southern Hobby, Alliance, etc., Magazine Exchange, etc. Some are closer than others, depending on where you're at in the world. You also need to be in contact with uh, Wizards of the Coast, Bandai, Pokemon, Disney Lorcana. You need to be getting those contracts finished. If you don't have those contracts finished, when you open your store and you don't have events, it is not going to be good. It's not going to be good at all. Uh, people will be very irked. And why? Well, they'll come in and shop for a little bit and like, what's your event schedule? You don't have an event schedule? I'm not coming back. Have that by the time you open. They typically require a walkthrough. They require a bit of information of, um, you know, your bathroom status, everything like that. So just keep that in mind, all right? Um, and once you get that, once you have your WPN, once you have your Bandai, once you have your, um, you know, your Disney Lorcana, you have all that stuff set up, your store's ready, you have your seating, everything's fine, you need to hire people. Oh my God, hardest thing in the world right now, absolutely true. I, pay fit, I paid someone $15 an hour, they just quit and said that they were underpaid. And people assumed that they were saying they were getting like minimum wage. In reality, they were getting $15 an hour. In Texas, minimum wage is $7.25, which inflation and stuff is making it harder for employees to live, and rising fees and rising distribution costs are making it harder for employers to pay. You're going to have to deal with a lot of people saying that you don't pay enough. Unless you're paying over $20 an hour, you're going to get that complaint. And um, you're a game store, so you're not, off the bat, you're not going to be able to offer health care and 401k. People are going to get irked about that. You're going to have uh, applicants that are just immediately write-offs, but find the passionate individuals and reward them when they come work for you and they put in their best effort. Have interviews, know what their passions are, treat them right, get them, you know, it's a game store, it's a small business in the beginning, you're going to make mistakes. Sometimes you're going to say things that don't happen, that's fine. Don't get stuck into the weeds of, oh my God, am I not meant to be an employer? Trust me, you're attempting to do your best, I understand, and no one understands that until they go through the process and they realize that, oh my god, this person is not going to be able to eat this month, he's attempting to pay our payroll, and our customers, for some reason, this month, consumerism dropped 80%, and he's attempting to maintain our payroll, this guy's a hero, they're not going to see it that way, they're going to see it as, what happened to the bonus this month? Well, you know, why aren't we getting this? Why aren't we getting that? Whereas, like, the free stuff that you were typically giving us, there's going to be so many expectations. Um, I'm not going to say don't provide those things because I think you should. That's what we do. But you have to temper those expectations and let people know that this is a very cyclical business. It's not always going to be smooth running, okay? So keep that in mind. Uh, hire two to three people. You're, if one person's not enough. You're going to overwork them. Hire two to three people. Maybe hire five people and just have them part-time going in and out. You need to make sure that people aren't overworked, all right? And trust me, having gone through this experience once again, another employee would say, I want more hours. You give them more hours. And I, I want fewer hours. I'm burned out. You give them fewer hours. I need more hours. I need more money. It's You're never going to win. You got to fire some of the... My biggest regret is not firing some of these people earlier because they caused such an issue while they were employed and I kept wanting to keep them because maybe they were good at event scheduling, blah, blah, blah. And then you realize that it's just not gonna work. They, they want Walmart corporate structure or Target cor corporate structure. The stability of that, they don't want a game store. They don't want a small business, which is obviously not stable, okay? It's not stable and your business is not gonna, you're not Mox Boarding House. Okay, when you're starting this, don't have the expectation of we're corporate. You're not corporate, okay? You just started. You're a small business. You're a small fry in the pan like us. We're still a small fry in the pan, and we do seven figures a year in sales. We're still small. We're still not anywhere close to what would be considered a medium-sized business, all right? Um, you know, keep, the, keep that in mind, man. That's so important. And don't hold yourself to standards that are just untouchable right now. So customers are coming in. You have events. You have everything set out. Um, my tip to you is this, 
okay? You, you've hit the point where your store's open. You're using Shopify or some other website domain to have all of your inventory stocked. Maybe you're using Binder POS. I'd advise against that. They took 2% of every transaction. Way too freaking expensive. I think it might even be more now. You're selling on TCG Player. You have your little warehouse zone in the back where people can pack product and ship it out. <laughs> Appreciate your loyal customers the most and get rid of the bad apples quick. What is a bad apple? Is a bad apple someone who doesn't spend money? No, no, no. Maybe they spend the most money. But a bad apple is creating a toxic environment in your store. A bad apple is someone who's basically harassing the staff and harassing you and making all these demands as if it's their own place. A loyal customer, maybe he doesn't spend that much money in the store, but he comes as often as he can. He refers you to other people. He's doing it. He's doing his best, okay? Get rid of those bad apples. I don't care how much money they spend. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. Don't be held to bondage by these individuals who don't care about you, don't care about your store, and just care about the power trip that they have in their head. You would be surprised. You think that business owners have a power trip? That uh, game store owners are, you know, under the assumption that they're better than anyone else? No, typically it is just going to be that there are some customers who treat you like crap, who message you uh, profusely, and, and that's it. Anyway, I'm in a parking garage. Let's end this video here. I'll do a part two later, and we'll talk more about the in intricacies within some of the things we mentioned, okay? Alan from MrMTG.com. Hope you enjoyed the video. Part one. Let's just call it part one of opening a game store in 2024. Bye-bye.